spaghetti. Thought you could get rid of me, didn't you? But no, I'm just too fucking autistic. Anyway, let's fucking do this. So, it's open mic night at the Cackling Cowboys, Ponyville's favorite comedy club slash dive bar. And Maud's like, What do you call an alicorn with no wings and no horn? Crippled, sorrowful, and above all lonely, for there are so few who can understand just how much he's lost. <laughs> Anyway, Punksall, damn dude, you've really been killing him lately. No, I haven't. You told me to stop, and I did. I keep my promises, Panky. No, <laughs> I mean, you've been telling great jokes. They're funny. You've been making people laugh. We don't need to talk about the other thing. Oh, yeah. I guess I write better jokes when I'm not constantly enveloped in a cocoon of soul-smothering anxiety and loneliness, and that kind of brings me to something I wanted to talk to you about. Wait, hold on. I think I'm gonna... <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, listen to that! No, look, I don't mind Ultra Spaz ass hug Binky as much as a lot of people seem to, but that was a screeching convulsion right there. It's like we've got some kind of per scene character energy quota that has to be filled, and since Mod's so inexpressive, Pinky just had a grand mall screech attack in the middle of the conversation to restore equilibrium to the show as efficiently as possible. <laughs> Anyway, Paka wakes up the next morning with retrograde amnesia due to her acute shrieking fit and she can't find Mod, so she trashes Glimmy's room in a delirious rage and then, in an even more concerning turn of events, goes cake shopping for Mod's birthday party, seemingly unaware of the fact that she works at a bakery. She gets in it with some dude who people tell me is supposed to be a pony version of that one guy from that one show who always says bazooper or whatever I, I can't say for sure because i don't watch it but it seems legit to me because he's really fucking obnoxious and he's a huge waste of time so punk finally finds her sister and she's like where you been dude i woke up in a hospital this morning and mod's like pinky the reason i've been so busy is that i have a boyfriend now <sighs> And there it is. Just like that, our lovably inscrutable rock horse is taken. You know, it's funny, as I'm recording this, it's uh, raining real hard outside. Uh, just seems appropriate, very dramatic. And uh, there's something I want to say to all the mod fags out there. You know, she's not my waifu, but uh, I just want to tell you I am so, so sorry. I'm sure you thought I was going to point, laugh, and start throwing the cuck word around, but uh, I know you've already had enough of that. Look, on one hand, you know, Mod's one of my favorite characters. I love seeing her in another episode, and I'm glad she's happy. But on the other, I'm sorry you guys had to take this hit. She's been with us for four years, and I know what some of you must have felt for her and must still feel for her. Yeah, I won't pretend to know what you're going through right now, but I know what it's like to fear it. Uh, a lot of us do. That's that's the price. That's the anxiety of uh, having a waifu in a show that's still running. And I think those of us whose humanity has not yet been completely consumed and assimilated by this giant, hideous, shoggoth creature of indifference that is the internet can at least offer our sympathies. I, I won't act like I know what she should do next. Uh, I think you can figure out I've got a few um, issues of my own, and I know better than a lot of people that uh, the first suggestion off of some random prick's head could fix your problem, then it wouldn't be a problem in the first place. But uh, still, if I can offer a bittersweet piece of consolation... 
The saddest part of our love for our waifus is that they can never actually be with us, but that also means that they can never truly reject us either. So please, don't do anything crazy like kill yourself or someone else or chop your fucking dick off or something, alright? Because she didn't do this to you on purpose, because she couldn't, um because she didn't even know you were there in the first place. That's so exciting! My sister in love! Technically, we're in like... Wait, you're in like... What? Anyway, we're introduced to the BF and Punkers also. How'd you two meet? And dude's all we met at a petrified wood exhibit. What's petrified wood? It's the same as a fossil. Wood that's hardened into rock over millions of years. I hope it doesn't take that long for his wood. Pinky, I swear to God, don't fucking start. Technically, we haven't had intercourse yet. Why, do you have, like, confidence issues? Like, are you too petrified to get wood? God fucking damn it, Pinky. Get out of here. So, Pinky needs some advice. And if she was having an issue with Rarity or Nutter Butter or someone else important, I'm sure we'd be talking to Her Highness Principal Princess Twiggly Wiggly Sparkle right now. But since her grievance only involves supporting characters, she has to go through Tier 1 Friendship Support first, aka Guidance Counselor Glim Glam. You know, man, Twilight always serves tea and cookies. Yeah, well, Trixie's in rehab, her wagon's impounded, and I got stuck with a case of these and six cartons of menthol, so that's all you get. Now, why are you blowing this guy off so quick? Pinky, you're all about friends and shit. My sister's blowing him off. That's the problem. I thought you had three sisters, man. This must have happened before. Nah, man, we all grew up on a farm together out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I left when I was a kid and traveled all over, but they stayed, you know, just three strong young farm girls blossoming into nubile maturity without a single male for miles around suffocating in their collective lonesome hormonal desires. Gods only know what they got up to late at night after a few drinks of Dad's Rock Vodka. <laughs> Jesus, Pinky, you're murdering me here, man. Hey, that's a great idea, dude. Thanks. So, Ponka throws Mudbriar in her party basement, and she's about to whack him like a pinata until he makes his offhand comment about Mod not liking surprise parties, so she lets him off the hook and goes to confront her sister, and she's all, what the fuck, dude? You ate surprise parties? Dash hates pies? Why does everybody lie to me? And Mod's like, because, Pinky, giving you even the smallest piece of criticism feels like kicking a puppy. For all of your outwardly projected joy and exuberance, you're the most fragile, disturbed creature I've ever known, and I'd rather endure a thousand surprise parties than make you sad one time. Look, I know Mudbriar's probably kind of a douche if you aren't used to him, but just this once, even if it means cashing in every favor you owe me, can you just be cool and try to get along with him? <laughs> you really like him that much, huh? Everything about him makes me happy. Well, too bad! Anyway, Ponka spazzes all the way home to seek the sage advice of her eldest sister, and she's like, Dude, Limey, you gotta help me. I just don't get what Mod sees in this prick. And Limestone's like, Uh, you don't need to. Sis. Bro, what are you talking about? He's dating Maude. We need to get along and understand each other and be friends and shit. All right, I got a metaphor for you, Pinky. Think of Maude's boyfriend like this gem right here. Dude, that's not a gem. It's just a regular rock. Well, it might look like a regular rock, but all you gotta do to find the hidden gem inside is crack it open and go fuck yourself. Do not fuck this up for Maude. Do you hear me? You know how miserable she's been and if this guy makes her happy you fucking put up with it because she's your family act like a fucking adult and think about someone else's feelings for once hey I i'm pinky by god damn it all i do is care about other people's feelings no all you do is think about the idea of caring about other people's feelings and then use the self-esteem that gives you as a coping mechanism for your own depression as soon as a situation demands some actual sacrifice from you look at what you do you throw a fit and run away. But what if they end up getting married? I'll have to put up with them forever. Yeah, dude, sometimes you just gotta shut your fucking mouth, put on a smile, and put up with some shit forever. That's what sacrifice is. But, uh... 
sucks. You know what fucking sucks? Being a 35-year-old virgin who spends every day of her life moving rocks and watching her parents grow old and die while you go off and save the world and Maude gets her cherry popped. That fucking sucks. But I put up with it because that's what the family needs. You get what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, I get it. Also, you're still a virgin. Get out of here before I break your legs. So, Punk goes back to the old PV, tries to be cool with Mud Boy, and when he acts like a tool, she shuts the fuck up. As a compromise, she still throws the big party, but she has Glimmy put a shitload of ketamine in the punch bowl and pull a fake on the adult attendees with a cardboard cut out of Mod while she, her sis, and the BF just chill on a hill. And Piggy's like, you know, Mod, I learned something today. I never really stopped to think about how much my family sacrifices for me or how little I actually give them in return. I'm sorry I made things so hard for you guys, and I'm glad you're happy together. Thanks, Piggy. Technically, shut up, faggot. Yo, I'm sick of getting the shaft, nigga. This shit is baloney, so I'ma amputate my penis for a cartoon pony. Fuck you, calm for long, I'm disowning my bones. Cause you won't let me have a wife who I can keep on my own. I'm going to rod for more, no one feel it hard. Say, how can I get cock blocked if I don't have a dick? I'm going to rod for more, cause I don't want to remember all the pain that you caused me. I'm removing.